Well, and Beckett and Associates actually began as actually Plummer, Wardeman and Beckett, and finally became Wardeman and Beckett when Plummer uh, left. And they began in about 1932. And interestingly, they were struggling along doing little projects like young architectural firms do. And there was a competition for the Pan Pacific Auditorium in Los Angeles. And they entered that competition and they won the competition. And they were really, really excited. With the prize money, Walter Werdeman, Beckett's partner, who played tennis, joined the tennis club. And there he met some movie stars. And they all wanted to play tennis with this young architect who was a good tennis player. And they began doing movie star homes all through Homey Hills and Brentwood. Uh, Robert Montgomery, uh, James Cagney, uh, Gene Crane. These are names that the young people don't, probably don't even know. A guest at one of the homes was a man named P.G. Wynette. And P.G. Wynette was president of Bullock's. Bullock's department store was a big department store in Los Angeles at the time. They had a downtown store and they had a store in, on Wilshire, Bullock's Wilshire, which had been done. And P.G. Wynette said, you know, I'm thinking of doing a suburban department store and I think it should look like a residence. And you people are really proper to do this. They got so much publicity from the uh, both from Pan Pacific and from Bullock's Pasadena, that General Petroleum was going to do a building downtown Los Angeles, and they got that General Petroleum building, and they designed that along a modular way, which had not really been done well before, where all the windows lined up on modules and the whole building was modular. And then the great commission was Prudential Insurance Company wanted the Western uh, headquarters. And they did it on Wilshire Boulevard, right by the Librea Tar Pits. That Wilshire uh, Prudential building floats on a big slab because of the tar pits underneath it. You used lightweight concrete, you used modular design. And so that really launched them into the field of large-scale architecture. Along Wilshire Boulevard, uh, people don't realize how many of those buildings are Beckett buildings and the office buildings. Uh, very interesting was, and we don't talk about this too frequently, uh, when the 13-story height limit was lifted, about 1959, 60, something of that nature, uh, Walton Beck and Associates did the first 21-story building, which was called for Travelers Insurance Company, on Wilshire Boulevard at about Hobart. Uh, across the way was Equitable Life Building at 34 stories, a U.S. Borax Building, a Texaco Building, uh, all of these great buildings, many of the great buildings along Wilshire. And I call them great. I think they're very, very nice looking. They're very functional. And of course, the Beverly Hilton Hotel was by. We got, Welton Beckett got to know Conrad Hilton very, very well. And we did the Nile Hilton in Cairo, Egypt, the Havana Hilton, Havana, Cuba. And, the, and those are all total, total design. The Nile Hilton in Cairo was a big challenge because Egypt at the time would not allow anything to come in outside of the country. Everything had to be from Egypt. But they didn't have bathtubs. So they allowed them to import bathtubs, <laughs> which was interesting. But everything was done so, so completely. And Wilshire Boulevard uh, developed so beautifully uh, what was called the Miracle Mile. Uh, we, there was shopping, retail all along that area, all upscale retail. That was a great, great area. But so was Mid Wilshire, where the Ambassador Hotel is. And that's where we did the Equitable Life Building, the Prudential Texaco Building, which is now called Koreatown, typically. But you wonder how big the firm grew to about, in Los Angeles, we had about 400 architects. We had more than that nationally, uh, maybe 1,000 nationally. Nobody got individual credit. It was all Welton Beck and Associates, all, every building, even though we had some very strong designers. And they never, would, they never left. The, uh, people stayed on. The Lou Nadorf, the Bob Tyler, Fred Orr, Pierre Cabrol, uh, all stayed on. Uh, I mentioned Pierre Cabrol. Pierre was the architect for the uh, Cinerama Dome. He was influenced by Buckmeister Fuller with the, uh, uh, that form, and so he did that center around the dome, which frankly was chastised uh, greatly. Uh, people said, ah, that's a Buckmeister Fuller thing. Now it's one of the <laughs> landmarks in Los Angeles for some reason. I would say it was the largest firm, yeah, I think it was the largest firm in Los Angeles and one of the largest uh, certainly in the United States. Design-wise, the firm was blamed for not having a design look a design mode, you know, we know what these new, with the architects, you look at the building, you say, oh, that was done by Gary, this was done by so-and-so. Uh, the Beckett didn't do that. They looked to see what the client wanted and what the client needed.